Hey traders, checking in on the cryptocurrency space. Bearish day out there today with the altcoins dropping harder than Bitcoin. The bears have had control over the short term over the past couple of weeks. And not a whole lot has been going on fairly sideways, but bulls not proving anything to us. So let's check in on where we stand bigger picture and establish some game plans going forward. So we got Bitcoin giving us a new daily lower high. And we can see every bounce attempt has been a daily lower high since we topped out at 36.7 thousand. We had a lower high at 36, essentially. And now we've got another lower high at 34.6. So each bounce giving us daily lower highs. And as long as that is the case, we know the bears have control on the daily time frame. So now we're looking back down at our recent low of 32.1 thousand. If that level breaks, we've got 30.1 and then 28.8. So a couple support levels to be watching and a clear lower high pattern. So we're down near the low of the day right now on the hourly. We're in oversold conditions. We're not extremely oversold. And honestly, I love oversold bounces, but I have no interest in trading Bitcoin for a bounce right now. The reason being, we are range bound on the daily time frame. And if we can look at the last two weeks of action, not much has changed. And we also only have some time frames oversold. The four hour is not close to oversold. The hourly is only just getting to oversold. The 15 minute is cooling off on the way down. It's not a waterfall drop. And as you know, if you've been watching for a while, I like waterfall drops if I'm playing bounces because they are more likely to result in V-shaped bounces and quicker gains. And when you are stair stepping on the way down, you're cooling off RSI levels to allow the move to follow through essentially. So I am expecting an hourly oversold bounce here in the short term. We'll just be looking for an hourly lower high to be a result of that bounce. But there is just nothing about this setup that is the trade coming to me as far as what I want to see. And again, at this point on the daily time frame, I am only interested if one of two things happens. If one, we see a waterfall drop and RSI levels get extreme on the four hour and the hourly on down the line. And if we're heading down towards 28.8 thousand, then I'm interested in some bounce plays. Or if the bulls prove something to me by changing the daily trend and breaking the daily lower highs. If neither of those two things are happening, I'm not taking any trades. It's very simple and it's very easy to follow that guideline. And I have had no temptation to take any trades over the last bunch of days. That's not to say that there's not day trades or short term trades out there to be had for people that are focused on the cryptocurrency space but just for me personally and for what I'm looking for, it's not there. So I'm not trading it. So we'll keep an eye on that daily resistance and that daily support. And really nothing will be going on for me unless one of those levels breaks. 32.1 thousand or 34.6 thousand. So the dominance chart is one of the reasons I haven't trusted the most recent bull move. Normally I'd be looking at this daily chart and saying, okay, confirm daily downtrend and no follow through into a three day bounce. Does that mean the bulls are about to take over? And again, as I have been saying in all these videos, for me personally, with the pattern that we've been seeing in 2021, which can definitely change at some point, but it hasn't changed yet, it is the altcoins that lead up bull moves. And the bull moves that are led up by Bitcoin do not follow through. So we had a three-day bounce in that entire time. The dominance chart is going up. So that tells me Bitcoin's going up, altcoins are going up slower, and here we are with the Bitcoin daily chart not making any progress. So the Bitcoin dominance chart I need to see weakness there if I'm going to trust bull follow through. Is this our weekly higher low being set on the dominance chart? It sure looks like it. And if we break 48.28 and 48.69, we will then have a monthly bounce underway. So those are key resistance levels that are now right back in play with this move. And in my opinion, if we see another leg down and the altcoins lead the way down, as they are more thinly traded and they're easily easier to move in both directions with less liquidity, then we will see a potential scenario where all coins drop faster and the dominance chart breaks these levels. Unless we see a major news specific to Bitcoin, I do not foresee a scenario where the dominance chart breaks those key weekly levels and it's the cryptocurrency space going up. So in the absence of major news, I don't see that happening. So the dominance chart, weekly higher low, 44.48, and now all about 48.28 and 48.69. ETH USD, weekly lower high is set. Could this be a weekly bear flag? Absolutely. 
it was not a very meaningful bounce. We broke the low of last week now. And just like that, we're looking back at our low of 1700. The daily time frame topped out and rolled over, pretty much traded sideways for a couple days and is now seeing another leg down. There's a couple support levels, 2017, and then we're looking down at 1700. And again, it's just a lack of notable follow through the two day time frame. And actually some people use a three day chart. I don't often use it, but this would be one of those scenarios where the bulls have to hold 1700 and break 2411 for a three day trend change. But again, burden of proof is specifically on the bulls. And I need to see that dominance chart show some weakness. ETH BTC, weekly lower high set. So we've been watching a lot of these altcoin BTC pairings that have weekly equilibriums forming. We knew weekly lower highs were the most likely scenario and they are now being set at least on a few names and we're gonna be watching for it to potentially be set on a handful of names. So high, low, lower high, pretty much a double bottom and now another lower high is set. So this, these charts are continuing to tighten. We may tighten up for another three weeks or so. Certainly possible for that to happen but a lower high is now set. Let's just run through some names here and see who else is in this setup. ADA BTC, tightening up, lower high already set. Bulls trying to defend support. Matic BTC, still hasn't set a weekly high or low, so that's a bit of a different scenario. Binance, we'll look at that in a second, but hasn't set its weekly lower high yet, but we're watching for it. Binance has been doing a good job of holding on for the bulls over the last week. A couple other names. Link, I believe, had broken... No, Link had held support, but again, another very weak weekly bounce. So altcoin bulls not giving much confidence. Binance USDT failed to break daily resistance, but we are still in a daily uptrend. There's not many crypto names that are in daily uptrends right now. And as long as 300 holds, that will remain the case. So yes, we did fail resistance and there was a top fishing play there for bears, but... If the bulls can maintain 300, the daily uptrend does remain intact. And we can see the same exact setup on the BTC pairing. Failed to confirm a daily bull flag, rejecting from resistance, and we would have to drop down and break support of 92.47 if our weekly lower high is going to be shaping up on this equilibrium. So overall, holding on a bit better than many other names, but still not confident as a bull because the cryptocurrency space is having a short-term bearish lean over the past few weeks. AXS USDT is getting a lot of attention because it is a name that has been running hard to all-time highs. And again, when the crypto space is boring, Bitcoin has been boring for the last two weeks. AXS the last two weeks has been very exciting. So that's where attention and volume and volatility goes. And at this point, because we have already gone up so significantly, it's mostly people scouting bearish because we have bulls tiring out a little bit, slowing down, I should say, you can see we hit that high of 1960, pulled back, set a four hour higher low off EMA 12 support. No red flags there, but certainly making note that this healthy consolidation was almost an 18% pullback. We then attempted to break resistance, failed by 2%, and now we're just in a tightening range. So I am viewing this as a high, low, lower high, and this is the bulls attempting a higher low, holding $16 support. And then we'll watch for another potential lower high compared to 1924 if we do see these bulls get a bit of bounce follow through. So it's a tightening range. If this equilibrium on the four hour were to break bare, we zoom out and daily consolidation will be underway at that point. The BTC pairing is doing something very similar. And again, just look at the daily chart here. And when you cannot tell the difference of me doing this, these are different pairings they are doing the exact same thing. As we know, that's what we call the spotlight. The bulls were in the spotlight with this move up and they're holding the, the significant correlation. So we will get a lot of bear follow through if the US dollar and the BTC pairing were to break bearish at the same point in time. Right now, our four hour support is holding and we're looking back up at resistance of 561. We would have to fail 561 and break 503 to confirm a four hour downtrend, which would likely lead to a four hour bear break of the US dollar. I should say the tether, this is USDT on Binance, but that would be a scenario where a bear break on the USDT pairing would happen as well. 
So keep an eye on this name if you're bored in the cryptocurrency space because this is where the volatility has been and this is certainly where some attention is for the time being. Litecoin bulls standing out. I want to give an example here where I look at this US dollar pairing and nothing stands out. The bears are in control. This is still a very weak chart overall and anything under 148 is just a daily lower high. So I look at this chart and I say, well, I don't really want to be a bull on this chart. We're just looking for a daily lower high whereas there's a big upper wick on this current daily candle, our daily lower high is potentially forming. But you look at the LTC BTC chart and it's a big green candle and we just hit the highest level in three weeks. So this is just an example where you can have a coin gain significantly against Bitcoin and have its BTC pairing chart with a big green candle. But if it's happening when the cryptocurrency space is dropping, all this is telling us is Litecoin is going down less than Bitcoin. So if I just look at only LTC, BTC, I might get accustomed to thinking there's a bullish opportunity on Litecoin because it's holding up better than Bitcoin. But if I'm in the LTC, BTC pairing, there's not many gains to be had as a bull. Again, all it's telling me is we're not going down as fast as Bitcoin. So it is definitely important to have a gauge on the cryptocurrency space as a whole. And of course, the direction Bitcoin is going because we know the powerful bullish moves happen when both the BTC pairing and the US dollar pairing are doing the same thing. And in this instance, the US dollar pairing is going down the last three hours. The BTC pairing is also going down the last three hours. But even back here, the BTC pairing was going up from essentially two to 11. And the US dollar pairing was going down for half of that time. So have to be aware of what the broader market is doing. Bears are comfortable. Bears are entering on lower highs. And we have to see, I've been watching this Bitcoin 12 hour pattern. Still watching the support line because that is still valid. And this is a support line from back here. So not coming into play unless we head down to 30,000 and potentially below. But I was watching this resistance line, which did see a break and no follow through. So the resistance that I've been keeping an eye on was right there. So rejection, 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 broke it bull and no follow through into this pullback. So for me, that pretty much just means I don't care about that resistance line anymore. It's not something I was acting on. It was something I was using for visual clarity. And now that clarity is gone. So where do I find the clarity? The very clear daily lower highs on every bounce attempt. Bulls would have to hold 32.1 thousand and break 34.7 if we're going to see any shift in the short term back towards the bulls. All right. So establish those game plans. What are you doing? My game plan is patiently waiting for one of two scenarios. If neither are happening, I'm not trading. You can be patiently waiting for a retest of 28.8 thousand and potentially saving capital for the mid to lower 20 thousands, which some people are looking for as a target. You could be looking to play short. There's plenty of short opportunities as far as scouting those lower highs. And you can be picky. You can be a picky bull and say, I have no interest in looking for a bullish position until bulls show up with a notable spike in bull volume and breaking key daily resistance levels. So again, establish those game plans and stick to it because boredom will force you into bad trades. If I wasn't trading stocks, I would be trading crypto more actively and I would be losing trades more. Without a doubt, I know that that would be happening. So either take a break from trading, focus on trading other things, or again, everybody getting their kicks out of X AXS in the short term. And we will anticipate that as long as this volatility remains, that attention will remain on this name as well. Feel free to ask any questions. Don't forget to do good things out there. And we'll keep an eye on these two key daily Bitcoin levels that we are still trading in between. Scarlet runner beans. I had to build this second tier of climbing wire for both the cucumbers and the beans.
In another couple weeks, this winter squash will be covering all of these paths. You can see it's already starting to climb. It's a delicata squash. I didn't plant any tom tomatillos this year, but these are all the seeds from last year that fell in place. So there'll be a bunch of tomatillos to be had. First snapdragon, 